Please hang up and try again. Hey guys, this is Trent and I am here to do a software tour and a final review of the HTC HD2. Hope you all enjoy. Once you take the HD2 out of standby mode, you basically see a main display screen that depicts the time and the date as well as a slide function toward the top of the screen to take you into the phone's interface. If you have a number of incoming text messages or emails, there will be a number that pops up in this sliding command icon. Now, once you have that number in that sliding icon, you can tap it and then it will then display additional sliding icons to be able to show you how many text messages or emails you've received. Well, it looks like right now we can do just that. As you can see, I have one new message that came in. So what I'm going to do is tap it and it shows that I have an email that came in. So what I'm going to do now is tap on this icon and it's going to take me directly to that email message. See? going to touch and slide it open and it brings you to the home screen. The one thing that is breathtaking about such a huge display is that you have weather animations that go across the screen depending on what kind of weather you have. And as you can see in Norfolk it is partly sunny. So the one thing about this kind of weather phenomena is clouds. And as you saw just now, clouds drifted across the screen, which I think is very amazing in itself. Now the typical layout of the HTC Sense is basically the same as the Touch Pro 2, except for a few cosmetic differences and a couple of additional tabs that I'll tell you guys about later. Now the first tab you have is the home screen which shows the typical time and the weather, the date. You have quick links below the main home screen display that can be customized to access any application, any program on the phone that you would like to have accessed. Next tab over we have people which is basically a snapshot of all of your contacts. It restricts you to only being able to call your friends and family. Now once you take your finger and tap on one of the pictures, you basically call them right off the bat. I don't like that. The one thing I did like about the Rolodex feature on the Touch Pro 2 is that underneath each photo, you had multiple ways to contact them, whether it be through email, an SMS, or a typical voice call. This is basically your storage point for all of your text messages that come into your phone. And it's no different than what you've seen on the Touch Pro 2. Now what's great about this is that with the huge 4.3 inch screen, you have a lot more real estate to play around with. So instead of seeing one little sample of the letter that came out of an envelope like on the Touch Pro 2, you basically have a whole sheet document, <laughs> which is very neat. Now, depending on how big the message is itself, you can often see the entire message on the one sheet that you have here, the calendar. Calendar works just like it does on the Touch Pro 2. No big difference here. This is an additional tab that has been added by HTC. This is basically the HTC Twitter client that proves to be fairly reliable in more ways than one. The only downside is that it's not very intuitive for everyday use. For instance, when you come to the main display of incoming tweets, when you click on one, you're basically brought to another display that shows the exact same thing that you saw on the main screen, which tended to be a bit confusing when I first started to use this. You will see four icons at the bottom. The first icon is going to be for all of your incoming tweets. The next icon is going to be for all of the tweets that mention your... The next icon over is for all the tweets that mention your name. And the next icon after that is for all of your direct messages. And then your favorites. Now the only downside to using the HTC Peep as your main Twitter client is that for some reason I could not find a way to delete 
any of my tweets that had been posted onto Twitter. You have weather, which of course takes advantage of the beautiful display to showcase the wonderful weather animation for every phenomena you can think of. Every time I see this application, it, it's just, it's beautiful and it's breathtaking. Now, the fact that you have so much detail going into such beautiful animation, I think it really says a lot about HTC wanting to give a good impression to any user that happens to come across its devices. And it basically gives you a quick link to the browser as well as additional links to any sort of web page that you want to have saved. Okay, now this is gizmodo.com as it appears on the Opera browser that's in beta right now. Once again, it is not really intuitive. You have to one tap brings you into the text to be able to read it. Once you're done reading, you still have to click on this icon to be able to take you out and give you a full view of the website itself. So I'm not too crazy about using this new Opera Mobile 10 beta browser on a Windows mobile device. It does not support landscape at all for a website. Even, with, even when it's turned on its side, the accelerometer still doesn't seem to kick in. Now what I do like about the Internet Explorer browser is that it is a bit more intuitive than Opera Mobile. Now, for instance, if you want to zoom into an article you want to read, boom, you double tap, you read the article, you're done, you tap again, and then you're looking at the whole website. And a great thing about this browser is that it does support the accelerometer so that you can see the website in landscape mode. And this is the main reason why I don't use Internet Explorer as my main browser, because of all of these error messages that pop up. It basically works exactly the same as on the Touch Pro 2. In addition to being able to go through every picture like so, you can also use the accelerometer to tilt the phone on its side and then browse all of the photos like so. Amazing. This is just ridiculously amazing to be able to do this on the fly. Now, as you can see, any sort of video that's taken will appear as a film strip amongst all of the still pictures. And once you press onto a photo, it immediately takes up the entire screen and the capacitive screen works amazingly well you have a couple of icons here at the bottom of the screen. You have an icon to begin a slideshow. And then the second icon is basically a way to enter your album view. Okay. Of course, on the right side here, you have icons that take you to either the still picture camera or the video camera. Over, we have another new addition to the tabs called Footprints. This is basically a digital scrapbook. Upon taking a picture in Footprints of any sort of landmark, the phone automatically downloads location information as well as mapping coordinates for GPS. You can then take time later on to go back to the picture and add additional information that you see fit. This is a picture of a portion of the Richmond skyline that I took when I was on tour with the Virginia Opera, and I'll click on that. As you can see, you have the GPS coordinates that were automatically downloaded by the phone once I took the picture. And from that, it determined that I was in Richmond, Virginia at the time of the picture being taken. Another great thing about footprints is that you can take old photos that have already been taken from your album and make those scrapbook photos as well. This is a picture that I took in St. Peter's Basilica on my trip to Italy back in 2005, and I added it to this application. Now, even though I don't, even though I haven't added the mapping coordinates or the GPS information yet, I did add the Vatican City as a location, and then at the bottom, I added my own note by typing with the QWERTY keypad. In addition to typing your note, you can also leave audio notes as well like this one. This is actually the original balcony that was the setting for Romeo and Juliet in the city of Verona, Italy, which inspired the famous story by William Shakespeare. 
Next tab over, we have settings. Nothing different here. Basically the same old fare in regards to uh, operating your smartphone. And that's basically it with the typical layout of HTC Sense. In regards to using the QWERTY keypad on the HD2, I figured that with such a huge screen, I would have more than enough space to be able to adequately type quickly on the Windows Mobile device. But I was a little bit wrong in the beginning. I actually found the feedback of this on-screen QWERTY to be a bit too sensitive. No matter what character I ended up pressing, there were sometimes other characters next to my finger that ended up being uh, put onto the document by accident. But luckily, I came across a solution from xdadevelopers.com where someone basically created a cab file that lessened the sensitivity of the QWERTY keypad, so it enabled me to type a bit faster with no problem whatsoever. So let's see if this will work. All right, as you can see, the QWERTY is not really too bad in regards to writing. Now, the one feature that was exciting to see on the HD2 was the multi-touch feature that allows you to do this. Using the still camera on the HD2, it's no different than using the still camera on the Touch Pro 2. Same kind of interface with the icons on the screen here, and then you have the zoom feature on the side that you can activate with your finger. Then you also have icons below here that access different parts of the camera. You can tailor the autofocus to be aimed at any particular point of your choice. Okay. And then once you found your focal point, you hit the shutter button, you hit the shutter icon there, and you got your picture. There is one new feature with the additional dual LED flash, and that is a video light that can be used in the midst of recording video. And I'll do that now. We are now recording video, and as you can see, everything in the frame is illuminated by the light. Okay, and unfortunately the speaker quality for music playback is not really good at all. And you guys are about to hear it in a few seconds. The interface of the music player itself is about the same as the Touch Pro 2. As you've just now heard, if you happen to have the volume turned at a very high level, you may as well expect to have a lot of distortion. But aside from that, there is a brand new interface on the music player that is quite eye-catching, and it happens to be CoverFlow. Once again, I don't think that it's any way to rip off the iPhone, but it is good to finally see this kind of interface on the HTC device. The interface is pretty good, but it's a shame that the audio quality can't measure up to the interface itself. As far as playing, I have about over 2,000 songs on my 16 gigabyte SD card, and there is a huge problem with this phone being able to shuffle all 2,000 songs. And I'll show it to you right now. If I choose a song to play, 
and the phone is asked to shuffle all of these songs, there is a problem where the phone freezes, it lags for a certain amount of time, it just malfunctions and it just becomes hopeless and I have to end up taking out the battery or turning off the phone completely. As you can see, the music has started but nothing is popping up on the screen. Okay, we're still waiting. The phone itself becomes inoperable. There's no way to click on any icon. Everything basically freezes. Even though the song that I've selected started playing. Even if I hit the home button, it's just frozen. So we're just going to have to turn it off. Alright guys, sorry about that, but that is what I have to deal with when I attempt to play my huge music library that's stored on my 16 gigabyte micro SD card on a Windows mobile phone. It's not just with this HD2 that this happens, this also happens on the Touch Pro 2s as well as every other Windows mobile device that I've owned. The only phones so far that have been able to play my huge music library with no trouble at all have been the Nokias. Between the Nokia N97, the N97 Mini, and the N900, they play my library flawlessly with no issues at all.